welcome to Willow's World of DIY. I'm Willow, and today I'm going to show you guys how I built this bed frame. Let's get to it. This is a rough sketch I drew just to get an idea of what I think I can build. And in this video, I'm just going to be building the frame, and I will do the headboard and drawer boxes in separate videos. I'm using Murado and Purple Heart for my inlays, and I'm using Soft Maple for the frame rails. I ordered all this lumber from Woodworkers Source and I'm really happy with the with the wood that they picked for me. This soft maple has a nice curl in it and it's kind of hard to tell in this shot but you'll be able to see on the finished product. I start off by ripping the soft maple to 6 inches for my side rails and for the foot rail. Now I'm just checking my measurements and making sure it's 6 inches all the way across the piece. And I'm using my DeWalt job site table saw with a Diablo 60 tooth blade on it. And now I'm sanding all the frame rails with 80 grit sandpaper on my random orbital sander. I'm measuring and marking uh, 84 inches for my side rails and I left them a little long so I can have room for my headboard later on down the road and I cut the foot rail and head rail to 76 inches now I'm cutting a 45 degree angle at the top of each side rail and on the foot rail I'm using my router with a half inch straight cut bit to make a slot for my inlays. But I decided to use a T-slot router bit just so I can slide the pieces in instead of gluing them in. And my thought process behind this is just so the different uh, types of wood would be able to expand and contract at their own rate without you know cracking any glue or having to have nails in it. Everything seemed to be going pretty well up until this point where my router malfunctioned and popped up out of the wood. I got lucky because this router malfunction happened on my first pass and I still needed to widen the slot to three quarters of an inch for my final pass. So I just had to tighten the set screw for the stop on the plunge cut router base and I didn't have any problems after that. Now I'm cutting strips of wood for my inlays out of this purple heart. and some Murado. These strips of wood are one inches wide so I set my table saw at seven eighths of an inch to cut these into the T-shape uh, so they'll slide into my T-slot. I break away the thin strips of wood on each side and then I clean up the groove with the chisel. And then I square up all the ends of the inlays on my miter saw. I'm sanding the inside of the channels with 220 grit sandpaper to make them nice and smooth before I install the inlays. And then I sand all the inlays to make them nice and smooth so they slide into the T-slots on the frame rails. Now I'm installing the inlays into the frame rails. I'm using a dead blow hammer and I made these to have a snug fit so I wouldn't have to use any glue. I used paste wax on the bottom of the inlays to get them to slide in easier. I'm 
I sand the frame rails with the inlays installed and I started off at 80 grit and I worked my way up to 800. Here's a closer look at the two side rails after I sanded them to 800 grit. I'm building this bed frame for my brother and he lives out of state so I loaded everything up, all my tools, all the wood so I can deliver it to him seven hours away plus he has more room in his garage so I can finish this project. Of course my helpers Miss B and Bobo have to come with. Good boy. Are you ready B? There's some really pretty mountain ranges along the way, so I tried to film what I could, but I hit rain, and it rained for about four hours of this trip, and you can't really see anything. I'm really glad I covered up all my tools and lumber with that tarp, because it's coming down pretty good. Well, it's seven hours later and I'm just starting to pull into town, but man, look at these mountains. I just wanted to share these with you guys, let you guys see how beautiful they are. All right, back to the build. I made my inlays one inch wide at the base, three quarter inch wide at the top, and three eighths of an inch deep. I need to cut some more Purple Heart inlays for the foot rail, so I'm just setting up my saw and I'm matching it to the pieces, the inlay pieces that I already cut. My helper Miss B came in to make sure I'm wearing proper safety gear. I'm using an N95 mask, safety glasses, and earplugs. Now I'm installing the inlay pieces into the foot rail and measuring it for center. And then I use my miter saw to cut them flush. Now I'm doing more sanding. This is on the foot rail. Here's a closer look at the foot rail and man the uh, soft maple, I love the curls in it. It just looks so beautiful. Kind of has tiger stripe type of look to it. Now I'm ripping the head rail at six inches and the center support at three inches. And then I cut the center support to 80 inches on my miter saw. I'm using my router and a flush cut trim bit with a bearing on top to router out pockets into the frame rails so my mounting hardware sits flush.
I'm using a jig that I made out of three quarter inch plywood, a piece of scrap that I had laying around, and I used a three quarter inch straight cut bit on my router to make it. And I made it six inches wide, the exact width of my frame rails so that I can clamp it into place. Then I test fit all the mounting hardware to make sure it's going to fit. I'm using my router with a quarter inch straight cut bit to cut slots uh, underneath where the brackets go. Uh, this will allow the male brackets to have clearance to lock into the female brackets. I install the male brackets on the foot rail and on the head rail and the female brackets on the side rails just to um, s allow it so when you take it apart you can stack the boards together and you won't have any uh, male brackets sticking out to gouge the wood. Now I'm marking the center of the head rail and the foot rail so I can router out for a bracket for the center support. And I'm using a 3 quarter inch straight cut bit on my router. Now I'm test fitting everything together to make sure everything lines up in the places that don't so I can trim them. Then I cut the two side support rails to 80 inches. Then I trim up the side rails a little bit to make them fit flush with the foot rail. And I cut a 45 degree angle at the top of the side rails to line up with the foot rail. I did a final sand on all the frame rails. This is at 3000 grit. And I worked my way from 80 grit all the way to 3000. And they turned out glossy smooth just like a bowling alley. Now I'm installing the support rails to the side rails and I'm using a countersink to get them flush. This is a shot showing how I zero my miter saw. Now I'm cutting four legs at 11 inches each. And I'm marking them because I want them to be tapered. Now I'm ripping them down with my table saw and I'm using a spacer block in between the leg and the fence to get the angle that I want. And then I cut them all to the same length. Now I'm cutting all the suspension boards to 76 inches. I'm using my router with a 3 quarter inch straight cut bit to cut notches into the center support for the suspension boards to fit into. My helper Miss B is inspecting the work. I think she approves. This was my former helper Bobo and he's no longer with us so I decided to let this clip play in real time just to honor his memory. He was a purebred Rhodesian Ridgeback. We got him at 10 weeks old and we had him for 13 years. You've probably seen him in a few of my videos. 
He always liked being around me. He didn't care what tools I was running. He always just liked to be right there. He battled with cancer a few times, and the last time really took its toll on him. He was a great companion and one of my best friends. My buddy Chris stopped by and helped me do some cleanup. Thanks, Chris. Now I'm using my router with a quarter inch round over bit with a bearing to round over the legs. And then I sanded the legs with my random orbital sander. I'm using two inch lag bolts and fender washers to mount the legs to the headrail and footrail. We were debating whether or not to stain this frame um, and also what type of finish to put on it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments if you think I should stain it a certain color or um, whether I should use lacquer or shellac. You know, I was just thinking like paste wax, just rub it with paste wax. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm debating on what design I should do on the headboard. This is the first sketch that I drew up, um, but I drew up two other sketches for different headboard designs. Let me know what you guys think, if you like them or you like a certain one, or if you don't like any of them. Uh, let me know in the comments. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching Willow's World of DIY. Until next time.